King's Bounty 2 just landed today, and I hope you're ready for a buffet of nostalgia to wrap yourself up in. King's Bounty delivers a ton of new mechanics to any veteran of the series. From the varying unit types to the character creation, there are lots of ways you can get lost when starting your first playthrough of King's Bounty. That's why I'm here to help you, to guide you through the lands of Nostria hand in hand while we whisper sweet nothings into each other's ears. In this video today, I want to go over eight tips to get started in King's Bounty 2 because the tutorial is a little slim in the beginning, and there are definitely some localization issues with certain tooltip descriptions that can be a bit confusing. The way I like to do things on my channel is upfront the knowledge in the video so you can determine if this video is right for you. So the subjects we will be covering are character creation, character stats, talents, mana, leadership, unit specialization, analyzing armies, and lastly, using the map to your advantage. You can quickly navigate to each one of these subjects using the chapters in the timeline and the description. Also, if you're enjoying this type of content, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. I cannot tell you how each one of those things helps me in, you know, some varying degree in my relentless war against the YouTube overlords who hold dominion over the algorithm the princess that will forever be in another castle. But let's get started on eight tips to get started in King's Bounty 2. Our first tip here is about character creation or well, character selection for that matter. You've got three archetypes to choose from, the warrior, the mage, and then the paladin. Each one gets four talents and then a little kind of a special talent that is unique to them. Well, if you read one of them, like for example here, the warrior, it says incapable of using magic. That is not true. All three of the archetypes have access to all of the talents, so do not feel like you are gated from any type of content playing one or the other. You can do whatever you so wish. They will obviously have their own storylines and their own voice acting, so on and so forth. The big differences are gonna be their stat allocation and their leadership. Ivar, for example, has 450 base leadership, with the mage having 450, and then the paladin having 470. The paladin's all about larger armies, but when it comes to per level, leadership gain, the warrior gets 100 per level, the mage gets 70, and then the paladin gets 110. So again, the mage has the smallest army over the span of time, but can cast the most spells because their stat allocation. The, uh, the warrior is going to be getting most more warfare per level. I think it's like 2.5 or 3 with the Paladin getting uh, neither Warfare or the ability to um, cast more spells, but Arcane Knowledge, which is essentially how much mana you can use per combat. And the Mage gets no Warfare, and obviously all the stats are allocated towards magic. So, like I said before, you are not gated from using spells on the Warrior, and you're not gated from using any of these talents on the Mage. Choose the one that you like the sound of, I would say press start game and hear the character, and the one that you just want to go with the story with the most. As I've said now three times in this tip, you can use any talent you so wish. Our next tip is about your character stats, or characteristics and army influence, and you've got three. Arcane Knowledge, Magical Power, and then Warfare. And each one of these will control a different facet of combat. So for example, Arcane Knowledge is going to allow you to increase the amount of mana available in combat. So right now, Ivar can only use one mana in combat. Magic Power increases the damage dealt by spells and the duration of periodic spell effects by one round for every 75 skill units. Then lastly, we get Warfare. Increases allied units damage by 9.87%. And what I've found is that per point of Warfare, it's anywhere from 0.6 to 0.7 percentage increase. And that is, I think is on a... Um, a diminishing return. So at the very bottom of the scale, it gives you 0.70. And as you just kind of increase, it'll give you 0 0.67, 0 0.66, so on and so forth. As you gain more and more warfare, you get this kind of giving you less and less unit damage per point. That's important to note. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and stack all my uh, items onto my character real quick. And now we can see that we have army influence. So items will give you stuff like armor and health. And this, of course, does not go towards your character. It goes towards the army influence. So each one of these pieces in conjunction adds to 3% armor, 6, I'm sorry, 3% health, 6 armor, and 5 health. Now, what's important to note, too, is some of these things will say a bonus to specific style of units. Say, hey, 
all of your bowmen now get 10% increased damage, or this is going to increase your arcane knowledge, or you'll get certain rings and certain amulets and certain, well, mounts that do certain things. So you have to be kind of mindful when you're building out your, your character, especially when it comes to say, hey, I want to be Ivar who uses spells. Well, then I'm going to need to increase my arcane knowledge so that I can actually use some of these scrolls on the battlefield. So, for example, if I take a look at this here, I can't research it because I don't have the knowledge and so on and so forth. But I can use it on the battlefield because it is a scroll. And I cannot use it on the battlefield if I don't have enough arcane knowledge, which is, again, one more time, the uh, mana pool that you'll have when you jump into combat. The game doesn't do a great job of explaining all these and how they uh, kind of roll out to your character especially stuff like warfare here right at the beginning of this video that was at nine percent now it's at 13 percent, and that is geared up by all of my gear and every time i get a level on ivar because he increases his warfare that will go up as well so be mindful of these things make sure you're increasing the stats as per the kind of character you want to play in king's bounty 2 or else you won't be able to use any abilities Next up is talent points, and these are divided into four quadrants, order, power, finesse, and anarchy. And these are presented to you as you deal with quests throughout Nostria, both the main quest and the side quests. They'll say, hey, if you do this outcome, it's a power outcome, or if you do this outcome, it's maybe anarchy, finesse, order, whatever else it is. And what's important about these is as you do these quests, you will get points in those respective quadrants. As you can see, I've done none for anarchy or finesse up to this point with this character. But as you invest these points, this little gauge will reach this little node right there, which is currently grayed out. It'll then fill in like this one back here, and you'll be able to access this tree in the power branch or whatever branch it is. You can see it says it requires eight power points. That are Those are not talent points. Power points are, again, rel are related to the quest outcome. So even if I were to press this button, let's just show you. That doesn't send this number up by one. It doesn't make it so that I've got all of a sudden, okay, there's two. Now I've got a total of four points in power from talent points. Like I said, those are strictly related to the story and the side quests. So as you progress your character, you'll unlock more. And this, again, shows you that if you want to be a warrior, you can go down the finesse line and get access to a ton of abilities that are going to enhance your spells or make it so you can cast more. So one thing, though, I want to talk about real quick before we jump to our next tip is about the baseline of each one of these. Each one has got one ability, if not multiple, that are particularly good. So, for example, finesse, all four of these are going to enable you to learn spells. You can cast spells no matter what because you've got a scroll. Well, you can write a spell to your spell book if you have the corresponding skill. For example, here, Magic of Life and Light allows learning of life and light spells from scrolls. This, again, will be checked against your arcane knowledge, so you have to make sure you have all those things up. Um, I'm sorry, I think it's spell power. Then also in Anarchy, you get this ability called Cash Reward Increases. This is from whenever you loot chests. And this one is from Victory Reward Increase by 5%. Increasing one, if not both of these, will help you out with um, funds in the early game. Funds are what you're going to use to heal your troops and recruit more if some die. So that's pretty important. Then for order, each one of these is going to allow you to reduce the morale penalty that you have based off of your unit's ideals. So for example, if you have order units and you start to put in finesse units, they will start to suffer morale pen penalties. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. This will offset that. And lastly, in power, you get this one increases unit XP for winning battles by 50, 15 percent. I'm sorry, 10 percent on the bottom level, 20 percent on the top level. So even at one point into this, it is quite worth it. Next up is leadership, and leadership is very important. This is what's going to dictate the ultimate size of each unit or, or squad in your army. And the game doesn't do a great job of breaking this down, so let's go through it real quick. So my total leadership is 850. That's how much I have as my character. And the way this works is I'm going to look at the spearman. The individual cost per leadership per model or per, or per individual soldier is 130. Now, I've got 6, so 6 times 130 equals 780. I cannot have another unit. I can't have a 7th unit in here. I'm sorry, 7th soldier in here because my leadership is too low. If my leadership, if I had gotten one more level, I would definitely be able to because my total leadership would be 950. And if I were to add 130 to 780, that's going to put me at 910. 
So this would give me the ability to add that. It, it, it is 910, right? Yeah, it is 910. <laughs> I had to quickly do that real fast. So you basically look at your leadership because every time you're out on quests and you're fighting and you're leveling up, you're going to increase your leadership. So when you come back to a recruiter that allows you to increase your units, you'll see that I'll say like four out of six or five out of six because your leadership has gone up. This is crucial. It's why the mage will have smaller unit sizes than say the paladin, who's gonna have ultimately much larger unit sizes, especially as she progresses towards the late game. And the game I feel doesn't do an awesome job of explaining this, but you'll see that, for example here, my dwarfs, when I summon them up, I only could have two because they have 240 cost per unit. Now I can have up to three because I've just recently gotten a level up to 850. So make sure you're constantly adding to your units as you level up because you'll be able to because of your increased leadership. Now that we've covered leadership, let's talk about unit ideals. And these are pretty important because like I said, you'll be progressing down one of four talent trees, which are then represented by one of four different unit ideals. And they're displayed in the lower left corner right there. You can see that this guy is order as it then shows right there. But if I select this big mamba jamba, this wind spirit, it's finesse, or maybe this little guy, the brigand, it's anarchy. And again, last we have wolves for power. And why this is important, because you're going to want to mix and match units, right? You're going to want to add some here and there because this one's a really good tank or this one's a really, really good range unit or this is a healer, whatever it is. You're going to find the results here if I put, let's say, this guy across. So you can see that he's not too stoked. If I left click on this guy, hover over this, you can see minus two when following units are present order because this is the antithesis. And if I look at even my order units, even though I have the talent order balance, I still am suffering minus two when the following units are present, anarchy. And if I go ahead and bring over a power unit, I can see that the power unit actually doesn't mind too much. Minus one when the following units are present, order and anarchy, but I have that talent that gives me plus one, so it's a neutral morale. So you really can't just go ahead and just throw whatever units you want in. You wanna make sure that the uh, overall morale of these units isn't being penalized too heavily because the way morale works in the game is if you have positive morale then there's a chance that they will get an extra turn just like heroes of might and magic and as you can see here with terrible morale units have a 30 percent chance to skip a turn just again like heroes of might and magic and the such and if i have the talents that would offset this like i think i have talents on this character left yeah go ahead and do that and that jump back over here well look they're no longer at terrible. They're not happy, but they're at bad morale. So you want to be able to get the necessary talents that will offset the necessary morale penalties you're going to have for mix and matching troops into your army. There's a real quick one, and it's about mana. So mana in this game is a currency. It's not a replenishing force, in which case, you know, hey, you know, I waited a long amount of time and my mana's back. No, you'll find mana, you'll be rewarded mana, you can even purchase mana. And the way it works is it's used for one of two actions, either learning a squ scroll, like, like uh, scribing it into your spellbook if you're familiar with Ultima Online, or using that spell then in combat. So you want to be really mindful of the amount of mana you're using, especially if you're a paladin or if you are a mage. You'll be using plenty of these spells across the battlefield. And it's important because you might spend 100 uh, to learn the ability to summon a clay golem, then realize you only have 87 mana left. Now, again, you won't really run in, run out of mana by casting spells. It's going to be learning them is going to be the, the largest draw upon your mana pool. But it's something you should very you should be very mindful of depending upon the character you want to play. All right, we are on to the final two. And analyzing your army is a huge tip because when we jump into combat here, um, we see we're against three other units and not much to be said here. Like, okay, I'm just gonna jump into this. Well, if you do that, you're gonna find that you're gonna be up against a lot of things you didn't know or weaknesses that you maybe didn't realize. Take, for example, here, the Spirits of Light. They have a lot of passive skills. They, for example, this one, vulnerable to magic. I would not have known that on first glance, I'll be totally honest with you. Or this one right here, you know, basic attack deals magic damage. Pass, uh, passes through obstacles in slight elevations in terrain, melee fighter, so it's got a control zone, and then deals 50% more damage to undead enemies. In the area before this, I had the chance to get a bunch of undead soldiers, and I just chose not to. 
Had I done it, I would have been up, you know, a creek with this guy just punching into my undead guys doing tons of damage. Also, take a look at some other things on these actual unit stats to get a little bit of an idea of what kind of character it is, right? Okay, it's only got a speed of two, so it's not going to be hauling down haul uh, at a uh, uh, down range at me. And it also doesn't have the ability to um, use any ranged abilities. So that's great. Good to know. But if I click this guy, well, I can see that he does have some ranged abilities. So you do need to kind of be aware of what you're going up against because I didn't think the stone elemental was going to be the ranged one. I thought this guy was going to be the ranged one. And I didn't check and I end up having a bunch of units get pulverized by his boulders that he throws. Also, if they are ranged, look at stuff like this. Combat Master can perform ranged and melee attacks. Ranged attacks are blocked if there is an enemy in an adjacent hex, has a control zone. So that stuff is important to know. Spend some time, look at the enemy, until you familiarize yourself with the units you're fighting, because you're going to get yourself in a situation where you just get units pulverized, like I said, by stones being thrown by a stone elemental or things of the such. Really make sure you know what units are weak or strong to other things so that you can actually take the right course of action when you're fighting in the combat field. Last but not least, tip number one, the one that will save you the most time in this game. Check the map. And I can't tell you how important this is because when it comes to movement in any portion of the game, if you're not on the horse, it is quite slow. Even on the horse, it's quite slow. And you don't want to have to backtrack over yourself to go get a quest item, to go get money or a cash or any of the recruitment stations, whatever it is. And here's how the map is going to help you. So as you traverse around the game and you find, you know, things that are glowing, things that you can loot, caches, quest items, so on and so forth. They will begin to auto-populate on the map. I need to find and just go ahead and find some around here. This is in the first opening town. I like to make sure that any of these videos are as spoiler-free as possible, so you can at least discover some of the fun on your own. Now, if I go ahead and press M, you can see that that was once all clear. Now that I've discovered those little glowing nodes, they are on the map. And I can't tell you how important this is to save you time. I was going through a quest over here where I had to go all the way up this you know, winding sl uh, slope or some crap. And I had realized that I missed two chests at the bottom of it because they were just well hidden or whatever it was. So I had to run all the way back down and go all the way back up because as you can see, running on foot is painfully slow. So check your map as often as you can, especially when it comes to leaving an area so that you don't miss any, I mean, nothing is, no stone is unturned as it, as it were. So spend some time on that map, make sure you grab all the goodies that you can. And for a quick honorable mention, we have the mouse sensitivity. I strongly encourage you to reduce this. I have a Corsair gaming mouse, and if I move just a little bit, you can see it just goes completely crazy. So go to escape, go to settings, go to control settings, and then I put this at 0.4 or 0.5, and I find that it really makes the game uh, a lot more easy to deal with and you don't get motion sickness. As you can see, I'm moving the mouse pretty concisely here, not spinning all over the place, but this one should help you out quite a bit. And there you have it on eight quick tips to help you get started out in King's Bounty 2. Now, I know these aren't earth-shattering tips, and a lot of them you could learn by just simply staring at the tool tips and doing some trial and error. I was doing a bunch of characters, making them, checking their stats, getting a level, and then so on and so forth. But this should help, hopefully help you in kind of reducing that barrier of entry when it comes to selecting your character, how those unit ideals work out, how the talent tree actually evolves over time as you put more quests into the game. So again, hopefully all this really helps you get going in King's Bounty 2. If you have any other questions, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I've been playing it for quite a few days now at this point, and I honestly really enjoy the game. I'm going to be putting out some sort of review in the next week or two. It's going to be something pretty fun, so be on the lookout for that. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one, and take care.